sure seems warmer than it did sleeping in my king size bed is anybody going to San Antonio or Phoenix Arizona any place is alright as long as I can forget I've ever known her when whipping down the neck of my shirt like I ain't got nothing on but I'd rather fight the wind and rain than what I've been fighting at home yonder comes a truck with the U.S. mail people writing letters back home tomorrow she'll probably want me back again but I'll still Okay, there's great Charlie Pride. This was kind of a uh, hasty add-on here tonight uh, when I saw on my screen uh, late this afternoon that Charlie Pride, Pride had passed at the age of 86 of complications of COVID. So it's been a, it's been a tough year. We lost Hal Ketchum a couple weeks ago. We lost John Pride early in the year. We lost lots of people. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Thank God the vaccine is here. Hopefully it's going to be effective. Hopefully it's going to help and not harm. I guess time will tell. But uh, I, as a physician, um, have, I'm an advocate of, of uh, vaccines. I'm going to take it myself unless there's some major huge issue with it immediately out of the gate. Because I am also 68 years old, so that puts me in, in the category of... Uh, Fairly high risk, and I don't want to. I don't want to die yet. But Charlie Pride, what what a great guy! I um, first off, before I forget about it, if you have not seen the Ken Burns uh, country music uh, series that he did, if you have any remote interest in country music or music at all, I would highly recommend that. I mean, Ken Burns. Uh, his his work is all remarkable, but uh, being a, a country music fan, particularly of classic country, the older country, which included Charlie Pride, um, it was just I I couldn't get enough of that series. It was just great. It went through the background of country music, uh, and as you probably know, Charlie Pride was a black man who came up uh, in the late '60s, early '70s in the country music world, and that was just kind of on the cusp of the end of, of Jim Crow, so there was a lot of bad stuff, I think there's bad stuff happening now, there was a lot of bad stuff happening before the mid-60s, so, um, <clears throat> but he had an amazing spirit, and he, uh, he just was beloved by the country music community. I got a little story here, uh, I have to get my notes because I can't remember anything because as I already said, I'm 68. But anyway, he, he had, you know, he kicked around, was playing music when he was young. He always wanted to be a baseball player. He came up in Texas, he grew up in Texas, wanted to be a baseball player. He played a lot of baseball when he was young. He was on some minor league baseball teams. Ended up going to uh, Montana to play on a minor league baseball team. And the stories are great. Some, some of them are told, a lot of it's told on the Ken Burns special, but... Um, he was working in Missoula, Montana for the Missoula, I forget the name of the team, Missoula whatever, baseball team. And uh, so he, he was, uh, they found out he could sing. So uh, the owner paid him $10 a game to sing for 15 minutes before the game started, in addition to his $10 he got for playing the game. So that was great. And then he, 
He also got into construction work and did a lot of that when he was in Montana, but he also played a lot of gigs in some, some pubs there. And uh, finally the word reached Chet Atkins down in Nashville. Chet Atkins, a great guitar player, pretty good fiddle player too, but Chet Atkins was, uh, was running uh, RCA Records back at, in the time in the late 60s, early 70s. So, so Chet found out about him and signed him to RCA and things kind of took off from there. So it's a great story I, I ran across today. So it was right late 60s, um, he had a couple releases that started getting some buzz. And of course, nobody promoted the radio people, and there was no television per se at that time, that he was a black man. And if you listen to Charlie, he's got, uh, I mean, it's, he sounds like any other guy that sings country music, really, except for he's got a great voice, great rich voice. But so he was nominated for a, uh, a Grammy for his song, Just Between You and Me, which is, was his first big hit. And so in late summer of 1966, on the strength of his early releases, he was booked for his first large show, which was at Olympia Stadium in Detroit. And there was no biographical information. People didn't know what to expect. They heard him on the radio. So uh, there were only a few of the 10,000 fans there that day that, that knew he was a black man. So here he walks out on the stage you know, to this applause, which suddenly just became silence as he got out there because most of the people didn't weren't expecting what they were seeing. So Charlie said, uh, said, friends, I realize it's a little unique me coming out here with a permanent suntan to sing country and western to you, but that's the way it is. So went out from there, was a success, had a lot of large shows after that, uh, became a member of the, the Grand Ole Opry, second black, black person uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, many, many country hits and really was beloved by the country music community. So anyway, we're going to miss Charlie. Uh, I loved his singing and I loved his spirit. He always was smiling, always had a positive kind of aspect about him and it was great. So this was probably, this was in fact his biggest hit. Came out a couple of years after he kind of broke out. It's called Kiss an Angel Good Morning. chance to meet some old friends on the street they wonder how does a man get to be this way I've always got a smiling face anytime in any place and every time they ask me why I just smile and say got to kiss an angel good morning and let her know you think about her when you're gone kiss an angel good morning and love her like the devil when you get back home well people may try to guess the secret of happiness but some of them never learn it's a simple That I'm speaking of is a woman and a man in love, and the answer is in this song that I always sing. You've got to kiss an angel good morning and let her know you think about her when you're gone. Kiss an angel good morning and love her like the devil when you get back. Kiss an angel good morning And let her know you're thinking about her when you're gone Kiss an angel good morning And love her like the devil when you get back home So there you go, Charlie Pride, rest in peace, brother. He's on the... Uh, He's a member, he's a lifetime eternal, no, lifetime. He is now an eternal member of the Angel Band up there in heaven. So uh, if you make it up there, I'm planning on it. Uh, you're going to have all the Charlie Pride and all the Hal Ketchum and all that good stuff. We'll be waiting there for us. So um, check out that Ken Burns special on country music. If you have, if you, 
if you like music at all, even if you're not a fan of country music, I think you'll be surprised at the depth of, of what was created in this country. Um, and it's, uh, Charlie wasn't the first black man. Now, you know, the roots of country music uh, uh, really have, there are a lot of black roots from slaves that, that were brought over here. The banjo, you may or may not know, uh, originated in Africa and was brought to the United States uh, by the slaves. So, and you may know that banjo is a pretty, uh, has been a pretty integral part of country music over the decades, uh, bluegrass music in particular, but country music in general. So anyway, Charlie Pride was a great one. We're gonna miss him, but we have his music to treasure. We have the memories of that smile that he had when he was singing. And uh, if you're gonna be like me and planning on uh, checking out and uh, checking in in heaven, uh, you get to see Charlie down the line. So have a good night. God bless you, love you all, and uh, probably have some Christmas music in about a week. I'm working on a, a set of Christmas songs for, for about a week from now, so see you then. Take care.